Hey everybody, this is example number two for structural analysis of trust deflections using the virtual work method. The problem statement that we have is we're asked to calculate the vertical displacement at joint C. If a five kilonewton force is applied to joint C of the truss, the cross-sectional area of each member is equal to 500 millimeters squared, and the Young's modulus is equal to 200 gigapascals. So here's our uh, uh, truss. It consists of three members, member A, B, B, C, and A, C. It's pinned at location A, at joint A, and it has a roller support at B. And we have a horizontal force equal to 5 kilonewtons that is applied at joint C over here. And we need to find the vertical displacement at joint C. So before we proceed to the solution, I just want to let you guys know that this example is brought to you by Bentley. And Bentley Systems is a software development company that supports the professional needs of engineers, designers, planners, and contractors responsible for creating and managing infrastructure. Bentley has tailored software applications for design, modeling, and analysis of buildings, structures, bridges, plants, and more. And I have used Bentley's software, and I can say that the software was very easy to use, and the support that came with it was impeccable. Whenever I needed help, the Bentley team was there for me. And here's their website. It's Bentley.com. There's a link to Bentley.com and some of their YouTube channels within the description part of this video. So if you're a student and want to get familiar with the software and get a leg up over your colleagues during your job search, academic licensing is available through Bentley. And if you're a practicing engineer and you want to sharpen up your skills, they have a bunch of videos and webinars on their website, as well as their various YouTube channels. So please check them out. And now going back to our trust problem. The first thing we're going to do is calculate the support reactions and member forces that are due to the applied loads. So here's our truss again. We have a vertical and horizontal reaction at support A. Because it's pinned, we have a vertical reaction at B. And these values over here, this 5P divided by 8, P over 2, and negative 5P over 8, these are the internal member forces, which we'll go over, uh, which we'll go over right now. And so negative indicates, in, as far as the member forces are concerned, negative indicates compression, and positive is tension. So to calculate the reactions at A and B, first we'll calculate the vertical reaction at A, and we do that by taking the moment about support B. So we have negative P, which is the external force, times a moment arm of three, uh, three meters, plus the vertical reaction at A times a moment arm of eight meters. So we get the vertical reaction at A is equal to three P divided by eight, and then to get the vertical reaction at B, we just sum the forces in the vertical direction. So it's going to be negative AY plus BY equals zero. So it's equal to negative 3P over 8. That's what we just calculated for A, AY plus BY. And so BY equals 3P over 8. And this is a vertical reaction at B. And then we sum the forces in the horizontal direction to get the horizontal reaction at A. So going back to our figure, here's our horizontal reaction A, and our force is P. So it's going to be negative A sub X, negative AX plus P. So AX equals P. After this, we need to calculate the member internal forces. And so we'll first isolate joint A. So here's joint A. This, uh, this 3P over 8 and negative and this P, uh, horizontal P, is, are the reactions at the support. And so we have, uh, we have two members framing into joint A, member AB and AC. So we first uh, sum the forces in the vertical direction using the method of joints. And we find that the force in member AC is equal to 5P over 8. And this, since it's positive, this is in tension. And then we, 
we sum the forces in the horizontal direction. So uh, we get negative P plus FAC times 4 over 5 plus FAB. And so we just simplify this. Since we already know FAC, the internal force in member AC. And this gives us that the internal force in member AB is equal to P over 2. And again, this is intention. And this is pretty simple. It's just statics and method of joints. And now we do the same approach for joint B. And so we sum the forces in the vertical direction at joint B. So this 3P over 8 is a vertical reaction at B. And this P over 2 is the internal member force uh, in member AB, which we just calculated. And we need to find the force in member BC. So we sum the forces in the vertical, re uh, vertical direction. So it's 3P over 8. This is the vertical reaction at B plus FBC times 3 over 5, just using 3, 4, 5. So after simplifying, we get that the force in member BC is equal to negative 5P over 8. So this tells us that this is in compression. Next, we're going to remove the real load and apply a virtual unit load and solve for the support reactions and internal member forces. So here's our truss again. So we're going to place a unit load on the truss at the joint where the desired displacement is to be determined. And the load has to be in the same direction as a specified displacement. So since we're trying to find the vertical displacement at C, we apply a unit load uh, we apply a unit load in the direction, in a vertical direction at C. And so with this unit load place and all the real loads removed from the truss, we're going to use a method of joints or method of sections and we calculate the internal force in each member. And the internal force, internal forces are in member AB it's equal to 2 over 3. And I believe, that, yeah, the force, uh, the, the units will be kilonewtons. And in member BC, it's going to be equal to negative 5 over 6 kilonewtons. So again, this is in compression. And in member AC, the internal force is equal to negative 5 over 6 kilonewtons. So this is in compression again. Okay. So the last step is we're going to apply the virtual work equation and solve for the displacement at C. And so it's best to create some type of table. So here we have, uh, uh, we have the actual load, which is 5 kilonewtons. The virtual lo load is equal to 1 kilonewtons. It's just a unit load. The cross-sectional area is equal to 500 millimeters squared. And Young's modulus is equal to 200 gigapascals. So we have this table. Uh, it consists of five columns. In the first column, we have the member. So member, since we have three members, A, B, B, C, and A, C. In the second column, we have the internal virtual normal force in the truss member that's caused by, that, that's caused by the external virtual unit load that we applied. And then in the third column, uh, N, capital N, this is the internal normal force in the truss member caused by the real load. And then in the fourth column, we have the actual length of each member. And then in the fifth column, we multiply small n by big N and by big N, and we multiply it by the length. So small n, again, which is the internal virtual normal force, we get uh, these values from the previous step. So we're just taking these values for each member that we just calculated. The normal force due to the virtual uh, unit load. We just plug it in. So we had a 2 over 3 and negative 5 over 6 and negative 5 over 6. 2 over 3 and negative 5 over 6 and negative 5 over 6. And then capital N, this is the actual normal force that's due to the actual real load. So we go to the first step and we look at our internal forces of each member and we see it's 5p over 8, p over 2, and negative 5p over 8. 
So we just put that in. Going back to our table. So this is P over 2 and what was it? Negative 5P over 8 and 5P over 8. Yeah. So that's negative 5P over 8 and 5P over 8. And P, again, in this case, is equal to 5 kilonewtons. Here's P. And then the length is just simple from, uh, from the truss, from the basic geometry of the truss. We can get that. And then here we multiply the three values together for each member. And then we do a summation here for all three members. So we do 13.333 plus 13.021 minus 13.021, and we get 13.333. And now we can apply the equation of virtual work, and here it is. It's 1 times delta equals a summation of small n times big n times the length divided by, uh, divided by the product of the cross-sectional area in Young's modulus. So again, 1 here, 1 is equal to the external virtual unit load that's acting on the truss joint in the stated direction that we're looking for. And small n, or let's consider delta, Delta is an external joint displacement that's caused by the real loads on the truss. And this is what we're trying to find. This is what we're trying to solve for. Small n here is the internal virtual normal force in the truss member caused by the external virtual unit load. Capital N is the internal normal force in the truss member caused by the real loads. L is the length of the member. A is the cross-sectional area of each member, and E is Young's modulus. So we just simplify and plug in the numbers. This is our virtual unit load, 1 kilonewtons, times delta CV, that's vertical displacement at joint C, equal to 13.333 kilonewtons squared meters. And then we plug in the numbers for the cross-sectional area and Young's modulus. And we get that delta CV, the vertical displacement at C, is equal to 0 0.000133 meters or 0.133 millimeters. And this is the end of this example. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, check out the website. It's engineeringexamples.net. And please like the Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash engineeringexamples. See you guys in the next video. Thanks.